Today is the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Cycle B. The first reading was from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, who recall how God had chosen, who God has chosen to be the prophet and sent him to warn the people of Israel of their rebellious nature. At the covenant of Mount Sinai, God promised to be their God and they would be his people. Under King David and King Solomon, they enjoy prosperity. However, with wealth came greed, selfishness, and idolatry. Because of their infidelity to the covenant with God, they lost God's protection, their kingdoms, and were defeated, and many were sent into exile. Most of the early settlers of America were very religious, and we have until recently been a very God-fearing nation. Can we lose the blessings and prosperity that we have enjoyed for so many years. How are we rebellious? God is our creator and knows what is best for us. His teaching, especially when there is no ambiguity or confusion, should be obeyed with humility, especially when we think that we know better. We have to trust God even when it appears we are asked to do maybe contrary to our own self-interest or security. Mary was betrothed to Joseph, agreed to become pregnant with Jesus. This could have resulted in scandal divorce, or death sentence for adultery. Yet Mary told the angel, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be done unto me according to your word. Mary preferred to do the will of God even though there were challenges ahead. Which teachings of Christ do you find hard to accept or refuse to accept? For example, those on the sanctity of life from the womb to the tomb, fornication, forgiveness, selfishness, or the definition of marriage. When Jesus told his disciples that unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall not have life within you, many of his disciples left him because they could not accept this teaching. As many disciples turned their backs to Jesus, he asked the twelve, do you also wish to leave? Peter, the spokesperson for the twelve, answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter did not say that he understood or could explain what Thomas Aquinas would lately call transfiguration. He had to trust in Jesus' teachings. Faith is called faith because 
we have to trust in the truths and promises of the teachings of God. Without being fully able to fully understand them or to prove them for ourselves. If you are not prepared to struggle with some of the teachings of Christ's church, you will not grow in faith. You shall be like a new player who thinks he knows more than a successful and proven coach. Sometimes we have to be like the Blessed Virgin Mary and keep all these struggles in our hearts, reflecting and meditating upon them, but trusting that God knows best. Some truths like nonviolence or forgiveness of our enemies can only be understood over a long period of time. Christ is both human and divine. In Nazareth, when they did not wish to acknowledge his divine nature, they emphasized his human origins. Like the church is human and divine, Christianity, which started in a remote and unsophisticated part of the Roman Empire called Palestine, and whose vision was promoted by simple rather than scholarly men, converted the mighty Roman Empire in spite of 300 years of severe persecution. Christianity succeeded because it's of its faithfulness to the truths and its teachings. The light of the Holy Spirit present, present in the church, preserved by the truths of Christ's teachings, in the hearts of his followers. It is easy to dismiss the teachings of the church by stretching its human origins and ignoring the history of God's presence in his church for many, many ages. Millions were martyred because they embraced the truths that were unpopular and were seen as a threat to the lifestyles of others. In particular, they, Paul said, there's no Greek, no Jew, no Greek, no slave, no slave, no free, no woman, no man. We're all equal in the eyes of God. That had a profound effect on the Roman Empire, who had assigned the men as head of the families and everything else. And 90% of the workers were either slaves or servants. Millions were martyred because they embraced truths that were unpopular and were seen as a threat to the lifestyles of others. It is truth that conquers all. Truth can be suppressed for a while, but it can never be defeated. The gates of hell will never prevail against the Church of Christ. If you are not prepared to struggle with some of the teachings of Christ's church, you will not grow in faith. 
you will also become rebellious and there will be consequences. Let us humbly bow down and follow the teachings of Christ, knowing that our Father loves us, cares for us, and wants the best for us. <laughs>